So I've been using macOS for over three years now and have picked up a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. So in this video, I wanted to share some of my favorite features. These tips are designed to help you supercharge your productivity and help you get the most out of your Mac software. Starting off with window management. So recently, Apple have introduced the ability to snap windows to the sides of the display in macOS Sequoia, but I find some of these snapping options to be a bit too limiting. So what I recommend instead is that you install a free app called Rectangle. You get a lot more flexibility when it comes to snapping windows. You can snap them into thirds and corners, and you even have a menu of keyboard shortcuts that you can use and customize. So let's say you're extending your Mac onto an external display. You can easily use Rectangle's keyboard shortcuts to quickly move windows between displays. Speaking of external displays, if you're extending your Mac to a monitor like an Apple Studio display or a Pro Display XDR, you can actually adjust the monitor's brightness by holding on control when pressing on the brightness keys. If you want to preview thumbnails for all of your apps, you can just swipe down with three fingers on the app icon in your dock and it will showcase all of the windows for that app open in your space. Now, one feature that a lot of Mac users love is the ability to have multiple spaces. I use spaces all the time, including when I'm using my external monitor. But if you don't have Apple's magic mouse or trackpad, it can actually be quite awkward to switch between spaces. Thankfully though, there is a keyboard shortcut that enables us to do this. You just press on control and the left or right arrow keys and you'll be able to switch between spaces seamlessly. And you can also press control up to open up mission control. For our next tip, we're going to head into system settings, into desktop and dock. And we're going to minimize our windows using the scale effect instead of the genie effect. I find that the scale effect is just a lot faster and a lot smoother than the genie effect and it makes the overall experience of minimizing and opening windows just a lot more pleasant. And if you keep finding these animations when hovering over apps across the dock annoying, you can disable them by right clicking on the dock and disabling magnification. You can also customize the size of the dock by dragging on this line on the right. Inside of the Finder app, one setting I always like to enable is the file pathway at the bottom of the window similar to what you see on Windows by default, but for some reason, it's not on by default on the Mac. But the way we can get this pathway on the Mac is by clicking on view at the top and enabling show path bar, or by pressing option command P. Enabling show status bar in the same view menu or pressing command slash will also show you how much storage is left along with how many files are in your current folder and is another setting I highly recommend enabling. You'll also notice that the default sizes of files in the list view can often appear quite small, especially if you're dealing with images. It can be quite difficult to view the thumbnail for the file. However, what you can do is if you press on action at the top and show view options, you can choose to display a larger view for your list. You can also preview files on your Mac just by pressing on the space bar when selecting a file. So let's say you wanted to quickly view some numbers in a spreadsheet. It would be a bit overkill to open Excel and having to wait 10 seconds for the app to fully load just to view a couple of numbers when you can instead just press on the space bar and preview the file to find that number really quickly. Now, let's say you wanted to move a file across folders without duplicating that file. This is actually something I do all the time when transferring footage that I've airdropped onto my Mac onto my external drive. And essentially what we can do is press Command C to copy as normal. And then in the new folder, if we press Option Command V, you can see that it's actually moved the file from its original location to the new one. Whereas if I just press Command V, it would have created two copies and I would have had to actively find the original and delete it. Now, if you're copying text across different apps, one issue that always pops up is the formatting is usually a mess. However, instead of pressing Command V to paste, if you instead press Shift Option Command V, it will paste the text without formatting to match the style of your current text. Or if remembering that shortcut is too much of a pain, see if your text editor has an edit section in the menu bar at the top and press Paste and Match Style. 
When it comes to taking screenshots using the Command Shift 5 shortcut, you can hold down on the control key whilst capturing to save the image directly to your Mac's clipboard. However, pressing Command Shift 4 instead will allow you to capture a specific area more easily. And we can take this a step further because if you hit the spacebar, the system will automatically snap to capture the window that you're currently on. Now, one of the biggest power user features that Mac users have is Spotlight Search. I think so many people neglect what you can do with Spotlight Search. I use it all of the time for when it comes to opening up apps on my Mac, running quick calculations like currency conversions, and even searching for content on the web. In fact, if you type a query into Spotlight Search and then hit Command B, it will search for that item directly on Safari, which just helps you save a bit of time when searching for stuff on the web. You can also filter for certain types of information using the kind colon command. So if you type in kind colon folder, Spotlight Search will only look for folders and filter out all other results. And if you're a sports fan, you might even be able to search for your favorite sports team's upcoming fixtures directly from within Spotlight Search. If you're using a Magic Trackpad with haptic feedback, you can hard press on a word to quickly display a definition for that word, along with other potentially useful information like Siri knowledge. Alternatively, if you don't have access to a Magic Trackpad, you can right click on the word and hit look up to do the same thing. Now, one interesting trick that I discovered very recently was that you can actually insert images and files straight into apps just by dragging them into the app icon on the dock. And that will automatically open up a new file with that image in it. This next tip is for people who regularly sign documents on their Mac. You can insert digital signatures in the preview app by opening up the markup tool at the top and then clicking on the signature icon and then following the instructions on screen. Now, one thing that MacBooks are notorious for is having fairly bad webcams, especially if you're using an older MacBook, the quality you're going to get from the built-in camera just isn't going to be that great. But thankfully, there is a solution called Continuity Camera, which lets you use your iPhone as your webcam. And this feature works automatically. You just need to make sure that on your iPhone, inside of settings, general, airplay and continuity, that you have the continuity camera feature toggled on. You can also make use of the desk view option, which will use the ultra wide camera of your iPhone to try and give you a vertical top down view of your desk. Super useful if you're delivering live presentations and want to demo something on your desk. So those are some of my favorite tips and tricks for macOS. If you're coming from a platform like Windows, you might also want to check out my other video covering four ways you can make macOS feel like Windows, which you can find by clicking somewhere at the top here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for the next one.